hands together for the Mega Mega Jack. Step show through our formal tournament, a couple other events we'll talk about a little bit later on. 
chapter is making a difference. I'm going to share with you several examples of how we can utilize our strengths as a chapter to improve the lives of those in need. Um, overall, here are some of the main organizations that we were proud to support in the past year and also in the upcoming years. Um, first of all, I'm going to give you an example about St. Joseph's Children's Home. Uh, we held a Christmas card party uh, at the end of the last year where we opened up our chapter house uh, to all the Greek uh, community at UofL and were able to create over 400 cards for the children at St. Joseph's Home. It's an orphanage at, in Louisville. Uh, we were able to donate those cards to the children on Christmas and uh, it's just a great way to share happiness with these kids. Uh, another way that we were able to make a difference is through our whole uh, Cornwall tournament. Uh, this is a this tournament is an annual event that we support for serious fun camps. Um, this year, we're proud to say it was our biggest event yet. We raised up almost $2,000 for serious fun camps. Uh, this is also a great way for us to gather alumni, our friends and family, and the rest of our community um, to, you know, for a positive organization such as this. Uh, the third way uh, that we were able to make a difference in this past year, and we're continuing to make a difference, uh, actually in our world, is through Kick for Nick. Kick for Nick, to give you a little bit of background, uh, is an organization started by a fallen soldier, Nick Fidaris, uh, who was actually killed in battle in Iraq. Uh, but he had a dream that he wanted to share soccer balls with the children of Iraq. And one of our brothers caught wind of this a few years ago, and we decided that we wanted to partner up with U of L Athletics and U of L Soccer. Um, and this year we were able to donate 600 soccer balls to the children of Iraq, and also $1,200 to the organization that helped out with some of their costs. Another example of how we're continuing to make a difference uh, is through our STEP show. And this is our biggest event year by year, and this is our 10th annual. Um, this year, we were able to raise $6,000 for Series 1 camps, and we were able to also spread the word of our passion to about 1,400 people at our, at our event. This is a great way for us to bring the campus together. Um, what Basically, a background of the event, um, it's all the sororities at U of L, um, STEP, and they are judged by a panel of experts on their step. And it's a great way to entertain and bring everyone together while sharing our passion for serious fun camps. Another way that we're able to make a difference is through Adopt the Highway. This is a great way for us to make a difference in our local community by beautifying and making the city a better place to live. We were able to partner with a lot of the sororities on our, on our campus. Um, and this was also a great way for us to entice our brothers and encourage them to be involved in community service. And this show would be a great help for our overall community service. So in the spirit of giving, um, I wanted to share with you a few of the other organizations that we were uh, able to support throughout the year that other uh, Greek organizations on our campus um, are directly related to. So overall, we were able to spread $2,000 in support to other organizations not directly related to the Bay of Asia chapter. We also realized being the best on campus, we had an Excel and campus leadership. Um, as you can see, um, these are just some of the positions that we do hold on campus. Um, when I came in four years ago, this was kind of a low point, and we definitely wanted to build it up, and I am proud to say that we have. Um, not only do we have members of student government, IFC, student activities, and even the cultural center, um, we have made sure that we are a diverse leadership fraternity. Uh, that's one of the things that, that does make us great, is not only the fact that we do hold these and have great stats and stuff like that, but also that we are, we are able to show the campus what Phi Tau is really all about through a variety of leadership positions as well. Um, we actually have eight presidents on campus. We are 48% of our brother that holds a leadership position on campus, and 88% are, are involved in at least two organizations. And we're very proud to say that. Um, this kind of leads to the other point um, brought before our prom, um, is through Jim Collins' book, um, Good to Great. And this diagram right here, I know some of you all can't see it, but um, the diagram is kind of a focal point throughout the book. Um, basically, it takes six elements of how to go from good to great. Um, and these are some things that we have applied not only in this past year, but in, in uh, years further back. Um, the first one, um, is level five leadership. This is basically putting the whole before the individual, putting five tall and putting that um, as high. And we may be basically pushing toward the success of five tall, not only on a lo local chapter, but also on a national level as well. Um, we do this a lot during rush um, through uh, recruiting we guys. 
and, and not the individual, but the team play. We also do this through building um, our brothers through their four years of college, of being more of a team oriented person. Um, the next one is first two, then one. This is simply putting the right people in the right places, identifying individual brothers' strengths, and putting them in chairs or creating chairs for them. Because we believe that if everybody is uh, performing at an optimal level, that the chapter as a whole will succeed. The next is to confront the brutal facts. This is really where the good organizations separate themselves from, from the great. Um, and by doing that, is a good chapter is going to say, well, maybe next year, that was all right. A great chapter is going to see the things that they're missing and work towards those. For us, um, our GPA is one of them. Community service, philanthropy, and campus leadership. Those are some of the brutal facts we identified um, in the past years. And we decided to work on this. And, and the good thing that we have is we have achieved those and taken these steps. We're not done yet, but we're still on our way. Um, the next is the hedgehog concept. This applies a lot more to business than the fraternal movement. Um, because basically kind of the hedgehog concept says to focus on one thing, be great at one thing, but obviously from a fraternity you have to be good at a lot of things. From athletics to social, anything like that. So one thing that you can definitely take from this is, is to stop doing this, um, which is also one of the problems. Um, a lot of organizations have to do this, um, but very few have stopped doing this. And um, at the 2011 year, we had two things that we wanted to stop doing. Settling for mediocrity was a big one. You know, great chapters need to be great at things. Not settle for okay or good enough, but they want to do the best of their ability. Um, the second one is to focus on the middle third, not the bottom third. If you take any organization, you can split it into thirds. You have the top third, the cream of the crop, your leaders, your go-to people. You're the middle third, maybe the diamonds in the rub. Um, those who could fall into the top third, but also could go to the bottom third. Then you have the bottom third, who you know, normally are the ones that cause the headaches. And, you know, the executive council tends to complain a lot about well, what we found ourselves is complaining too much about that bottom half instead of focusing on the middle half and bringing that middle third um, up to the top third. And by doing that, that made the success of our chapter increase. Um, the other one, uh, cultural discipline, this is the want to, the want to come to brotherhood meetings, the want to come to social events, and not having to use threats or the word mandatory, but people wanting to come to things and wanting to see Pytel succeed. Um, this is something we're very proud of, the amount of brothers at this um, brotherhood meetings went significantly down, so we're very proud of that. And the last thing is to be a technology accelerator. Um, this is basically showing uh, innovation for the fraternal movement, coming up with ideas that haven't been done before, um, instead of following a path. We do this by a lot during recruitment. Um, one of the things that we have are our market station dinner, which many of the National Council have attended. Um, but basically it's a night during rush that is a formal, formalized um, event in which we show not only that five tall best chapter on campus, but exactly what we do nationally, um, and we sell at the national level. We've talked a lot about how to go from good to great, but with greatness, you want to have it long, or have longevity with that. Um, so Tyler's going to come and talk about the ways that not only are we a great chapter, um, but we are also built to last. So as you can see, we've laid a foundation, and we've instilled a culture in our chapter to be built for the future. Um, three of the attributes that we really are proud to say that our members possess are accountability, integrity, and passion. And we really think that these attributes are going to push us towards the future for success. First of all, accountability. We're only as strong as our weakest link, and we've really, we're really proud that our members possess this, because if one person falls, the entire chapter falls. Second, integrity. We're only, we do what we say we're going to do. When we, when we say we're going to do something, we make it happen, and we really know that that is what we're, what we're bringing forward. And last but not least, passion. Passion is the most important key to the success of the building of the future. If we're passionate about our brothers and our success of each other and the well-being of each other, we're going to have a strong chapter. We're passionate about doing something greater than ourselves, and that's what we have at the Beta Beta chapter, and that's going to propel us to the, to the future for success. And with that said, we would be honored to be selected as your Maxwell recipients this year.
Uh, I'll start off with a, a quick yes or no question. Has your chapter been represented at all of the uh, functions of convention that have occurred this fall? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, when you were up here talking, you said the word here. Talk a lot about um, how you improve your uh, service hours um, and your leadership roles, and you're going to be committed on that. Um, you also indicated that you showed examples of the increase in your GPA, which you can to be committed. Can you give some specific examples of what you did to create that up for your career? Um, well, what we've done recently.
diverse chapter, especially when it comes to our majors. Um, we have everything from math to business to psychology. Um, so there is somebody in there that we can find um, that can help somebody out that's struggling in maybe a, a, a very intermediate level class or something like that. Uh, you have a, you listed all the uh, campus positions that your, your members uh, serve in, and one of them jumped out at me was Gamma. Uh, could you say how you have used the ideals of Gamma in your chapter? Um, uh, first of all, if you don't know what Gamma stands for, uh, the Greeks advocate for the true management of alcohol. Um, this is something that is very a uh, great organization, I guess, on our campus. So we can't take all the all the credit for it, but it is a great program. Um, but definitely the risk management aspect. Um, they do do presentations, and actually a couple of our brothers gave a couple presentations during Gamma meetings. Um, but relaying those messages um, to the chapter as a whole. Um, making sure that everybody's aware of all the alcohol policies um, and having specific trainings for that. Um, so definitely the communication aspect is one way, um, but definitely the open um, between the actual organization and us. We have a lot of involvement in that with our members. Uh, can you guys can you describe for me or tell me a little bit about the membership orientation program? Yeah, actually, we, um, we adopted the national program, so we do follow that. Um, and we actually add some of our own beta beta flavor. Uh, but we, we really use the, the main, the national skeleton as our guide for that. In terms of uh, the recruitment, you mentioned in uh, your application some of the statistics from the fall semester. Can you tell me how many you participate in spring recruitment? Did you have recruitment this past spring? How many men did you recruit? How many have been initiated in that class? Um, from our spring recruitment, we, we do have it. Uh, we had 12 members come through and I hope six initiated. Um, a couple just decided, you know, it, it wasn't for them, which happens everywhere. But uh, but six did initiate this past spring. Our fall rush is the primary rush.
even live with that. Um, but we, we definitely show it during um, the Brotherhood and during the Rush as well. And going on with Tyler said about our market distinction dinner, um, at one point during that, yeah, there is an area in the library that's dedicated to Senator McConnell. And we do bring the uh, Rushies through there and basically show them uh, you know, where we came from, show them our history. There's actually Senator McConnell's paddle is actually hanging on the wall in there. So that proves to them that you know we, we're here to work. We're not here just to you know just be a social club, just to have fun, although that is one big part of it. But we also are here to better ourselves and to better the men that we get. I'll wrap up with one final question. I think Tyler, you had said um, that your chapter focuses on accountability, integrity, and passion. When someone doesn't live up to that within the chapter, what actions does the chapter take? We don't really, we don't, we try to stay away from negative uh, enforcement. It's really, we try to be proactive in that situation. If we have somebody that we feel isn't being engaged, isn't, you know, isn't holding their own, then we will have a conversation with them and, you know, try to figure out what's going on before we start to jump to conclusions. I think that's, that's our main focus before, because, you know, a lot of people.